So step three is to fill this up to this line, if you can see, to this line with spit. Um, I'm not gonna make y'all watch me do that because hey welcome back to my channel rethink adhd i'm going to do a review of the genetic test 23andme we'll do the process of getting the testing done i'll walk you through the timeline and how long it actually takes costs terms of use and all the individual details in between this is the first of many videos that are going to review so i hope you enjoy and like comment and subscribe share this video bye Okay, so the 23andMe kit came. Um, when I opened up all of this, it was in this little plastic container. I didn't, I filmed it, but then I was like, maybe I should have done it. So um, it comes with a little sample collection thing, the little um, sample bag, and then I'm assuming the cap to put on everything. It was super cute when I opened this because you open this box and it's like, hi. And I'm like, hello, how you doing? Um, and this booklet just has all the instructions for how to actually collect the sample and whatnot i'm really feeling the colors they're cute uh so it looks like there's a registration step so i'm going to go ahead and do that i haven't eaten or anything or drank anything for the last 30 minutes to my knowledge no i really haven't and then we're going to get started so the first thing i notice about this is that it's not a swab um it's a spit so <laughs> i had a spit fill this thing up to here with spit so if you have dry mouth, um, or in the case of folks that are taking ADHD medicines like I am, and you have dry mouth as a result of your medication, that might be a little bit of a challenge. We're gonna see what we can do. I don't have dry mouth, so we'll see what we can do. But I expected this to be a swab, not going to lie. I expected it to be like a little Q-tip looking thing. Uh, so we shall see what happens with this. This is my first time doing one where I had to spit in a, cu uh, spit in a, <laughs> a collection thing. So the first step once I opened the box was to set up my account and register my kit. It was a pretty simple process. I'll walk y'all through the screens that I'm seeing in case that's helpful. Okay. So that took like mm, maybe like two minutes to do. So after you do that, it looks like it asks you to put in this little barcode here. So in, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, to set up the account, it was really straightforward. They just asked you like your name, basic stuff to set up any any online account. Nothing really to write home about for that. Um, it asks you here if you're the one that's gonna be using the kit or somebody else gonna be using the kit and I'm gonna be using the kit, so I'm gonna put myself. It automatically populated my information that I just put in to start up an account, so that's nice. Only thing I needed to put in here was um, gender or, oh, actually, I really like this because it doesn't just have your, it has, so it has birth sex and it has male, female, um, and then it has gender as a separate thing and you can select that. So birth sex for me is female, gender is woman, and we're gonna hit continue. There's some stuff here about, you know, terms of service, privacy, all of that, which we've already read. So I'll, I'll talk to y'all about the terms and services and all that stuff, but um, ba -ba -ba, some consents. I do consent to processing of my information and more consents. There's like four pages of consents. Uh, I will say that one thing I have been impressed about, even as I was reading their terms of service, is that it's written in layman's terms, it's not in legalese. I hate when I read people's terms and service or privacy policies and they're not in regular language like most people in the United States don't read at the legalese level so it's really helpful when companies are considerate given that they want you to agree you, they should make sure that you understand what you're agreeing to I have noticed that that has been consistent even in their terms of service it's pretty easy to understand so that's good it looks like now they've given me a contact information if I have any questions that's cool and then they're confirming that I do in fact have consent to take this sample and give the sample. I guess maybe there was a history of people testing other people. Um, I'm agreeing that I am this person and I have read this document. And then the last, or what I hope to be the last step, because at this point I've had seven different screens, is to indicate whether or not I want to be part of any research initiatives at 23andMe. Um, I don't really know. 
Let me see. Da, 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 da. You know what? I'm gonna say sure. Why not? Um, there's a little bit of a question about biobanking, which I'm assuming is how the sample is stored. And they're asking me, do I want to give consent to store the sample? So da, 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 use this girl. And in this case, I do not want them to store the sample. So they can use the genetic data, but I would prefer if this cup of my spit was not just hanging around all the time. Um, and then they're asking me, do I have personalized recommendations? So, so uh, would you like to receive personalized recommendations based on, oh, they're asking me, do I want to receive more personal re personalized recommendations with custom health and wellness recommendations, offers, and other information based on my genetic information? I don't know what all is included in that. Typically, I would say no um, because I don't like spam, but I'm going to say yes for the sake of this review because I kind of want to see what, what they actually mean when they say personalized. At this point, we're going to review all of the things. We have accept, 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 and we're going to complete our registration. So that part was really easy. Um, there's this thing about, do we want to join their membership for $69 a year? No, thank you. Um, cool. So now that the kit has been registered, it says that's here. Do I go ahead and get started? Um, yeah, looks like I get started. All right. So we've done step one. That was the registration piece. We're gonna go to step two. So step two, no food or drink for 30 minutes. I haven't done anything. I haven't eaten or drank anything in that time frame. Um, usually they're recommending you do that because they don't want anything to interrupt or damage the sample. So that's why they make you wait. Same thing applies for smoking. Don't smoke before you do any of these tests. And some people say 30 minutes. I'm gonna say an hour. Just, just don't do it. Try to not do that before you take the test. So step three is to fill this up to this line, if you can see, to this line with spit. Um, I'm not gonna make y'all watch me do that, cause yeah. So give me a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that happen. One sec, we made it. Um, the experience of spitting in this tube was not my favorite. <laughs> But, but we did it. So they even have in here, make sure it's liquid saliva, not bubbles. So um, that was not cute. All right, and then we just hold the tube up right and we're gonna close it. That's step four. And step five would be to screw on the cap. So what cap? Oh, so I guess this comes off. That would have been nice to, to know. They kind of just assumed that I would know. Did I say that in that last step? The liquid lid and the lid will be released into the tube to mix with the saliva. Make sure the lid is closed tightly. Listen for the click. Okay, it did click. They assumed that I would know that this thing spins off. I'm glad I'm smart because I figured it out, but that's not a fair assumption. Uh, so now I understand what they gave us this cap for. So I'm gonna put this cap on it. Make sure it's secure. We're good. And then it says shake the tube for five seconds. So I think that's fine. Uh, step six, put it in the bag. Makes sense to me. Boom. And do not remove the absorbent pad. What are you talking about? Oh, this, it's already, there's no way I would have known to do that. And then we're going to, do we close this in any way? No, I guess we leave it open. So there's no real way to seal this. It's not like an envelope. It's just an opening that you slip the tube into and then that's kind of it, so it stays open. Um, but honestly, that's it. So now that we've done that, it says ship it in the box. So we still have our box here. Oh, it's already marked with return shipping and all of that. So I'm going to just put it in here like so oops just kidding in a much more organized fashion like so and oh it has a little peel here so i'm gonna peel this off and i'm going to close the box 
So it already says the shipping has been prepaid and I do see on the bottom side of the box my name and address. Y'all ain't about to see it though. Um, my name and address on here. And so I'm gonna seal this off pretty well. Boom, done. So since the shipping is paid already, I'm assuming that I can just drop this in a box. There is a little drop box around here, so I'm gonna go do that. And then uh, it looks like step eight is let the discovery begin. So once the sample is in process, you'll receive an email letting you know that your results are in. Simply sign into your secure online account to, and let the genetic discovery begin. Super cute, we're done, we did it. Um, so just overall from the packaging standpoint, I said this in the, the version of the video I made and then I realized I messed it up, but I don't love the plastic in here. I don't know if that's just something that they have to put in here from a sustainability standpoint, that kind of bugs me. I don't like things that are put in plastic, especially when they have this really sturdy box. I just kind of feel like this is unnecessary. But what do I know? I'm not a lab person. For all I know, it has to be sent in a plastic container like this. But um, if I could choose uh, 23andMe, I'd get rid of this thing. But that's me. And then I guess you throw this away because it no longer has that fluid in it that it used to have. And then that's it. So what I'm gonna do next is get this sent off and then I will upload this video showing you kind of the process of getting this thing done. Um, and then the next video will be all about the results. And I'm going, when I do the results, I'll be comparing them to the clinical, the official clinical guidelines so that we can see which tests are actually the most accurate based on all the research that's available today. Um, and so we'll have a lot to compare it to. So this is the first review. There'll be a lot more like it. Um, I have a whole list of companies that I'm going to do a review. So stay tuned. This is part one and I'll see you back for results. Bye.